Man, this video title is cheesy as hell, but hey, if it works, that's fine by me. I need the views, bro. YouTube ain't paying that well. You're broke! I'm even starting to consider starting my own only. What did he say? Oh, no. oh, hell no, man. What the f Alright, alright, so welcome to this new video in which I will be teaching you how to create what's in my opinion the yeah, best boy. way to go about hate boxes for punches, moves, all that stuff. This is not gonna be a video on how to create a full combat system, just the hate box part. I'm sure a lot of you might be doing it slightly wrong because I myself didn't figure this out until recently, but it's helped me massively. Alright, so let's get started. The first thing I'm gonna need you to forget about is dot touched. And I know that that's what everyone teaches you when they're starting scripting, but using dot touched for hate boxes can come with a a couple of issues and the main one is that when you're in high ping and or playing with someone from a different server region which can ultimately be translated into high ping i guess but what i'm trying to say is when you're in that situation sometimes that touched will not register the people inside the hitbox and obviously you don't want that hopefully you have enough brain cells to know why that's bad now why does this happen i have no idea if i'm being honest but i do know how you can quickly fix it instead of using dot touch to detect if people are inside your hitbox it's a hundred times better if you just use something called get parts in part and essentially get parts in part is an integrated function of roblox studio that will literally give you all the parts that are colliding with a certain part or in other words all parts that are inside another part or in other other words any part that's touching another part essentially when you do this it gives you every part that the hitbox is touching and it puts it inside a table now if you link that to a variable then the variable will contain the table and you can use that to loop through the table and then just apply the hitbox function there now on to the second thing when working with animation in conjunction with hitboxes don't use task the wait or wait a certain amount of time before the hitbox spawns i used to do this for every single one of my games and i do for example task the wait or wait drag the length divided by two and then like spawn the hitbox and this works i'm not gonna lie it really works but there is a way for you to save yourself all the math and actually make the hitbox spawning at the precise moment that you want it to spawn and that's by simply using animation event or markers however it's called listen i'm not an animator i i literally just learned this like a couple of weeks ago now how do you do this i only know how to do it in moon animator but if you don't have moon animator just search around how to add animation events or animation markers for whatever animation engine you use i'm sure you can figure that out now if you do have moon animator i can help you so open moon animator and open the animation of the attack in my case i got this punch animation here shout out to abyss for making this cool animation here if you open it you're gonna be able to see I have like a square here that's an animation event and what we can do with this is that we can tell the script to run specific code specifically when that point in the animation has been reached and we're going to tell him to create the hitbox when that point in the animation is reached all right so how do you add one of these you see this thing that says events to your left just double click it and it will create the event however now we gotta give it a unique name so double click on the animation event you just created and for good practice where it says name just put the name of the animation you want there if it's a hitbox I'd suggest naming it hit since it's simple and short, but you can name it whatever you want. We're not done yet though. We're still gonna do something else. Click this rectangle here and that's what's actually gonna create the event. Double click event name and rename it to hit or whatever you want and leave the number zero intact. I don't even know what that does. If you're done, then press OK. All right, now to assign the code to that specific animation event, we use something called get marker reached signal. And in the parentheses, you just put as an argument the name of the event. So if you name the event hit, then in the parentheses, you need to put hit and then you can also connect this to a function so code runs whenever this point in the animation is reached all right so what you're seeing on screen right now is a real example of how this code will look if you use both things i've given you here you get the animation track you play it and then you use track colon get marker reach signal hit to know when the point that we want the animation to reach has been reached we connect it to a function we create the hitbox part and a very important thing here is that we weld the hitbox part to the human root part using a weld constraint we do this so that we don't get any replication issues like for example getting the hitbox slightly misplaced also make sure the hitbox property massless is equal to true and this just makes it so the weight of the hitbox doesn't really affect anything make sure can collide is off so that people don't just get pushed weirdly by your hitbox make sure it's not anchored so it doesn't freeze you in place once it's welded to and another tip i could give you here is when positioning the hitbox in front of the character use this formula for the z-axis hitbox.size.z divided by 2 plus 0.5 multiplied 
by minus one. This will make sure that the hitbox is placed perfectly right in front of your character with literally no spaces in between, no matter the size of the hitbox. And then once the hitbox is created and welded, instead of doing dot touched, we use workspace colon get parts in part. We pass the hitbox as the argument and this gives us a table of all parts touching the hitbox in the variable. We create the hitbox function here, meaning what will happen once the part touches the hitbox. For mine, I kept it simple. I just printed the name of the parent of whatever it touched. Obviously, if you're coding a game, this will have a bunch of stuff here. But for testing purposes, I kept it simple. And the last thing we gotta do is loop through the table that has all the parts that touch the hitbox and pass them through the hitbox function. And last but not least, destroy the hitbox. Keep in mind, all of this will happen in a fraction of a second. Even though the hitbox transparency is 0.5, you won't even see the hitbox because it happens so fast. So go ahead and test it. And as you can see, it works perfectly. You can see in the output that is printing that it's touching this template R6 over here. If I'm being honest here, there's also one more thing I could add, but nah, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna gatekeep it. No, I'm kidding. I just didn't want the video to be too long. Maybe for a future video though. If you wanna know what it is, you can just DM me on Discord and I'll tell you what it is when I see your message, obviously. And remember, don't use dot touched and don't use task weight track dot length. You have been warned. Keep leveling up, bro. Be safe. And I'll see you when I see you. Peace.